Hello and welcome to Throttle Up. Since the badging and the nameplate has given away what car I'm going to review, I'll straight up jump to the point and tell you what's different in this Hyundai Aura and that is the CNG engine. The Aura is available in naturally aspirated petrol, turbo petrol, turbo diesel and as I mentioned a CNG as well. Although the Aura lineup consists of 5 variants namely E, S, SX, SX Plus and SX Optional, CNG is only available in two trims which is the S and the SX. This being the S variant. So this is the Aura CNG manual transmission S variant and that is practically the base variant that you can buy in CNG. The S variant of the CNG lineup would cost you around 7.88 lakhs ex showroom whereas the SX one would cost you around 8.57. Both these variants are 90,000 more expensive than their naturally aspirated petrol counterparts with, with the naturally aspirated S being 90,000 cheaper than the CNG S. Now talking about the front, you get a big Hyundai badging right in the front. The typical Aura grille which seems like an inverted trapezium. It's closed on the left but it's open on the right for ventilation and there's also a trapezium shaped ADAM also which is again closed on the left but open on the right. You can see this bullet kind of rectangular bullet kind of design in the grille itself. Also the smoked silver garnish which runs out across the exteriors of the grille is something that I really like which enhances the overall look of the grille. Now for the headlamp you get an out and out halogen setup with no LED usage in this main headlamp unit whatsoever. Now when it lights up, it lights up in yellow so there is no white treatment and this is how it looks when it's lit up. The indicators are again halogen and the main lamp is also obviously halogen even the high beam head, head lamp is also halogen so absolutely no LED but when it comes to the DRLs that is something that you get in LED the fog lamps are again halogen in this black kind of like cutout which is closed so there is no ventilation or any airflow of, of sorts but it still adds to the contrast given that this is the white body color this black fin like design where the fog lamp is housed looks good. Talking about the fin like design, a similar kind of thing is also done in the DRL itself where there is a twin treatment on either sides of that DRL. So it's not housed inside the headlamp which I am not particularly a fan of and it's kind of inside on the grill. So it's a very different take on the DRLs as such. Also they are on a very smaller side so that is again something that bugs me but it's a very fresh take nonetheless. Coming to the engine, as I mentioned, this is powered by a CNG unit which produces a displacement of 1200 cc and a maximum power of 69 PS and a maximum torque figure of 95 Nm. There is no insulation on the hood itself as you can see right there so the cabin noise might be a problem although the noise is still under control if you are seated inside the cabin. Talking about the figures, the figures are obviously not impressive because this is a CNG unit. And the main use case is for you to drive this in the city where you would require high efficiency because the petrol prices are soaring right now. If you want to actually have power on the highways and what good output, look towards the petrol and the diesel variants because this CNG is not going to suffice. Now talking about the side profile, this is a sub 4 meter car with a length of 3995 millimeters and a wheelbase of 2450 millimeters. Honestly, the side profile is not very striking because it's very conventional to look at. No usage of chrome, nothing very peculiar about it as such. The one saving grace is the spoiler on the rear which flows towards the side so that makes the side profile look a little bit different as compared to the other compact sedans. Now looking at the individual elements, you get a simple fuel lid, this gloss black finish on the C pillar which again adds to the contrast. Body color door handles, so nothing fancy about that. ORVMs do not house the indicator because the indicators are on the fender. The rear view mirrors, however, are finished in body colored. The door handles, as I mentioned, are on the outer side and in body color. You do not get any alloy wheels on this one. The tire profile is 16570R14. It has drum brakes at the rear but disc brakes at the front. The only thing that I miss is the alloy wheels because this variant does not offer any alloy wheels. It's just a 14 inch steel wheel with the covers obviously. Now for the rear, this is where the things get interesting both in the negative and the positive sense. Now I'll cover the cons first. The thing is that it looks over designed. It's very different to what we see. The spoiler does look good but still feels over designed. This chrome plate, the different looking tail lamps with the spoiler just looks over designed and to top it all, it looks very narrow. You get Hyundai badging, you get Aura badging you get obviously this chrome plate with rear parking sensors and this black plastic molding it's not skip plate of sort but just to add the contrast and the rear exhaust is at the right so no fake exhaust treatment the good is obviously this tail lamp which is very different to what we see in the other compact sedans 
and it looks very nice indeed it looks like this when it's lit up has this led treatment on the exteriors the, this is the entire led although the turn indicator and the reverse light is halogen the stop lamp inside the tail lamp as well as the spoiler is a halogen so no led in the stop lamps the reflector is vertically aligned which again seems to be an extension of this black plating which they have done on the bumper there's no shark fin antenna the stick is meant missing on the antenna but it's a very conventional antenna of sorts you also get a stop lamp inside the glass as well so a lot of brake lamps given again as i mentioned it's over designed and it's narrow and that is the only complaint that i have the tail lamp although however is very nice to look at same goes for this chrome plating and the rear spoiler is a very nice addition we rarely see a spoiler on the tail lamp in this segment and that too it's not an even an accessory it is part of the car design so that's really nice now to open the tail gate i have to reach out to the front door and pull this lever below the driver side because i cannot open this through an any electromagnetic button given on the tail gate which is a really big disappointment to be and the bigger disappointment is that there is hardly any space in the boot because of the cng kit the maximum stuff you can keep is maybe one bag and one trolley or two trolleys at max because there's nothing that you can keep apart from that the fifth wheel is a 14 inch steel wheel just like the other four wheels and it might be a hassle to take that out in case of a puncture because it is positioned right below that cng kit so one might have to actually struggle in order to take that fifth wheel out of that boot the boot is obviously not a highlight of this car since the cng kit takes up most of the space but now let's head to the second row of the car opening the door i realize that it's of a decent weight not too heavy not too light but the door pad is completely plastic it is finished in dual tone with this beige color at the bottom and this gray color on the top but it's completely plastic as you can see right there plastic 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 the bottle holder is of a decent size with this speaker mesh which looks really nice in this beige treatment the power window plastic and the door handle plastic is black and it's just very normal to feel or to look at so no premiumness oozing out of it but i am not complaining since this is not the top most variant of the hyundai aura now on to the seats i like this white upholstery which is finished in fabric and has this texture on the seats in the design so i really like that adjustable headrest and an armrest even though this is not the top most variant of the hyundai aura and even though this is not the top most variant of the cng lineup as well so this is a really nice touch you also get isofix child mounts i'm not able to show you the armrest right now because it's covered in polythene so you might have to forgive me for that but when i get into the cabin i realize that there's a lot of legroom in the second row it's not even that i have pushed the two front seats at the very front it's uh, adjusted according to a normal setting the thigh support is genuinely nice the legroom is very nice i'm genuinely impressed by the amount of space that they have provided in the second row of the hyundai aura there's no shortage of headroom as well because there's no sunroof to eat up into that handroom it does although tilt towards going towards the rear so that might cause some bit of a problem if you are a tall passenger the armrest as i mentioned is there but i'm not able to open it the grab handles are fixed so no pull or push function there's no sunroof but there is this came in lamp in the center there's also one in the front and it's just halogen no led treatment this is how the dashboard looks like when you're seated in the second row of the hyundai aura the biggest part that you would see that there's no infotainment but we'll talk about it just a bit ac vents are also present in this line variant of the hyundai aura cng you also get a 12 volt socket just placed below the ac vents although there is no chrome garnish or any silver surround but i am not complaining since it does compromise on the premiumness but it does deliver on the features and the space everything that you would need in a car of this price <clears throat> since i'm buying a cng i'm obviously very focused on the efficiency bit of it and the utility aspect so it does deliver on that front there's no request sensor on the handle and now let's talk about the front row the door pad has a very similar color treatment in the beige and gray format you also find the similar door handles just like in the back door there's this cut which very seamlessly merges to provide the space for the bottle holder which i really like now this treatment and this design treatment compared to the back door is different you get black door handles and this hexagonal kind of design which is still in plastic there is no leather or fabric but i really like that how they have done this cut to provide space for the bottle holder really nicely done now this is for electrical adjustable for the outside rear mirror this is to lock and unlock the doors and these are for the power windows all four are the power windows and that's for the window lock button the only auto up down that you get is for the driver side now that's to open the fuel lid and the tailgate of the car that's to open the bonnet of the car 
there's obviously three pedals since this is a manual there is no electrical adjustment for the driver side seat but you do get height adjustability for the driver side and the backrest adjust obviously i love this maroon piping treatment and this texture that they have given on this white upholstery this is fabric but i really love that design and the texture this is manual so three pedals and there's a dead pedal of sorts on the left hand side moving above these are two buttons the one on the left that you can see is from switch to petrol to cng and vice versa and the one on the right the knob is to adjust the headlight leveler now the ac vents are round which i am particularly not a fan of but they still look good on this dashboard nonetheless it does not get any start stop button so you get this key no not this key this is the spare key you get this key which is which obviously gets center locking and has three buttons to lock and unlock the car this is how the key pops out and if you hold the third button you can obviously release the tailgate as well so i like how they have done the key fob it looks very good actually the engine start stop button functionality if you want that in the cng hyundai aura you would have to upgrade to the sx variant because that one gets the engine start stop button but the s variant just like this one doesn't now this is the instrument cluster which greets you it is a very conventional instrument cluster with no digital speedometer or tachometer going on it does get very conventional two dials obviously the left one houses the tachometer as you can see right there the right one is the speedometer which gets a red needle so it's very conventional but i'm not complaining since they're still good to look at this mid is not just mid it's just a very basic screen which is operable through this stick knob to control or reset the odometer to go through the range and the average and all of that very basic information it also houses the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge as well the warning lights at the top and bottom the steering wheel is not finished in leather it is finished in plastic so there's no leather wrap of sorts the left controls are for the infotainment if you want to adjust the steering wheel it's adjustable for tilt but it's not just adjustable for reach so th the telescoping function is something that it misses out on now this is how the dashboard looks like from the driver's seat the first thing that anyone would obviously notice that this one misses out on the infotainment system and if you want to get one you would have to upgrade to the sx variant of the hyundai or a cng but coming to this one this gets the elevated floating design in matte plastic but not gloss plastic this is the basic audio system that you get with a very small screen if you have to toggle through the audio modes you would have to control through this knob it does get usb bluetooth and fm it does not obviously get android Auto and apple carplay using so many buttons to get in and out of settings and menus is something that takes a lot of time to adjust because we are in the day and age of using touch screen so that might cause a bit of a problem to adjust now the ac vents are finished in this copper surround but has completely black plastic treatment with the hazard lamp button in the center of those two ac vents no climate control but simple manual controls for the air conditioning you get two very clean knobs so it's very easy to understand ac button and converter button and all of that no wireless charger but you do get two usb sockets one for simply charging and one to connect the pen drives or the phone to play the audio obviously for the audio system this is the copper treatment that i was talking about which is consistent in the dashboard and the center console as well care knob is very very basic to look at there's no black or silver treatment so this gray color looks very basic there is orange stitching to go with this beige color and the copper treatment but still looks very basic nonetheless looks like a very old Santro that gear knob you do get manual handbrake two cup holders one which is a smaller size i don't understand why they do uneven sizes for the cup holders the handbrake is very ordinary to use and it's finished in plastic there's no center console armrest but there is a glove box which gets the cool function and there's a lot of space in this dashboard and the glove box as well as you can see right there there's the glove cool function in the glove box as well center console armrest is something that i really miss there's no seatbelt adjustment for the co-driver and the driver side the headrest in the front two seats are not adjustable even though they are adjustable on the back seat so that is something very strange why not give it for the two front two seats as well the bolstering is really nice i love the treatment and the design that they have given in this white fabric with this brown and maroon piping and this texture now onto the sun visor you do not get any mirror or any lamp on the co-driver sun visor and the same is the case for the sun visor on the driver side as well there is that's the mic for you to connect your bluetooth and to talk there's a halogen cabin lamp no sunglass holder the inside rear view mirror has the day night function but it is not auto dimming obviously as for the safety features you get standard features like two airbags abs ebd and there's also the speed sensing door lock function as well and that is about it for the safety features in this variant of the Hyundai Aura CNG. 
Now the use case for this specific car seems to be the ones which are very focused on city driving and maybe even the taxi so that this variant particularly makes a lot of sense. It is value for money. It, it gets you most of the features that you would need and actually nothing that you would want because it is very stringent on the price. Even for the fuel efficiency it will deliver more as compared to the petrol and the diesel variants. So if you're on a very tight budget and if you want to travel a lot in the cities and do not want to spend unnecessarily on the petrol this one should be the go for. If you feel that this one case misses out on the features and you are a feature driven person and are considering moving to the SX of the CNG it's better to move to a petrol obviously as well because you would obviously get more power. So if you are sticking to a very very fuel efficiency driven compact sedan this variant and this car should be the one to go for. If you are considering the SX I'd rather say that consider the SX in the petrol lineup. I not suggest the diesels because diesels are being phased out and they are obviously more expensive to maintain and even to buy. So if you want more features look towards the petrol variants of the Hyundai Aura but if you want a car which will drive miles and miles without being heavy on your pocket this S variant of the Hyundai Aura which would cost you around 7.88 lakhs ex showroom Delhi is the one to go for. Now this was my review of the Hyundai Aura CNG S variant. Do let me know in the comments what you think about this car and whether would you buy one if you were in the market for a CNG compact sedan. Do let me know in the comments how did you like this review, what did you find good or bad. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more such content. Your liking and subscribing is the way that I understand and realize that you are liking my content so do not forget to press those like and subscribe buttons. Keep watching Throttle Up.